Well, every morning as I am groggy and waking up from a butchered night of sleep, because we have young children in our home, so that is the reason why, there's a sound that sends a thrill of hope running through me. And ladies, you heard it tonight. It is the sound of my husband turning on our Breville coffee machine <laughs> and making coffee. And I don't know if some of you are like me, but just the sound alone of the coffee getting going and drinks being made excites me because I know in those early hours of the morning that I'm just moments away from a tasty and warm cup of coffee meeting my tired hands and my body and my tired mind. And just that cup of coffee coming my way is kind of like a thrill of hope for the day ahead, right? But let's be honest, ladies. If we are looking for small little thrills of hope like that to get us through our lives, we are not going to make it. Because our souls and our lives need a real thrill of hope, a thrill of hope that is deep and that is lasting as we journey through this wearisome world. And so I have just one thing, just one statement that I really want you to remember as we fit Enjoy this night and upon leaving this night, and it's going to be on the screen behind me. And that one statement is this, the thrill of hope that you need will come from a promise-keeping God. Let me say that again. The thrill of hope that you need will come from a promise-keeping God. And that is why Christmas is so crucial to our faith as followers of Christ, because Christmas itself is meant to remind us of that deep and lasting ultimate hope. And that is because Christmas reminds us that God is a promise keeper, right? His, his promises that were made and that were fulfilled are on display all around us at Christmas time. Think, for instance, of Micah 5 2, which says, But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah. From you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Or how about Isaiah 7.14, which says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. Or how about Genesis 3.15, which we recently studied on Sunday morning, which promises that, that um, the offspring is going to be coming through the woman and he is going to crush the serpent, right? And Jesus was born of a woman to fulfill this. So these right here are some of God's many and great promises that we see on display at Christmas. But why is that important for you to remember? What do these past promises have to do with your life today? And why should it prompt a thrill of hope in you day by day as you live moving forward? Well, the reason that these promises matter and the reason that they should prompt a thrill of hope in you is because of a person. That is the dominant reason. It's because of person. And it's because of that promise-keeping God that Christmas is all about. Christmas gives us hope that God is a promise keeper. He has been a promise keeper, and he will be a promise keeper in the present and in the future as well. So this means that every single promise that God has made to you, he is right now keeping, and he will continue to keep. And because of this, I want to just spend the next few minutes looking at five promises that we've looked at in women's ministry this year. And those five promises are also written out on those cards that you will get to take home with your craft. So you have all five promises there in front of you. But let's briefly consider what the promise keeper has promised to you right now today and for tomorrow and for the remainder of your days. The first promise that I want you to think about is from Hebrews 13, 5. And it says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Did you hear that, ladies? God will never leave you. God will never fail you. 
There is absolutely no way whatsoever that he will ever leave you or fail you. It is not even possible for him to do so. So what is happening in your life here right now? That the comfort of this promise can meet your heart. Or maybe what thinking needs to be confronted here right now. With this promise, I will never leave you nor forsake you. This promise is the thrill of hope that you and I need. Our souls need to be reminded that our promise-keeping God will never leave us or fail us. Or how about the second promise, which comes from 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Ladies, you will experience weakness. You are not sufficient. But God's grace, it is always sufficient. His grace is always enough. God may not remove the suffering and the wearying circumstances that you are right now facing or you will one day face, but he will give you grace in those circumstances that is sufficient that is enough to endure it. So what are those wearying circumstances that you might find yourself facing here tonight? Where might you be tempted to maybe give up from one degree to another? And how might this promise help you? Help you to keep moving forward because God has promised and is supplying grace that is sufficient. Or how about this familiar one from Romans 8, 28? Number three. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. Did you hear that, ladies? This verse says all things. That means that there are no qualifications and no limits. Everything that God allows to happen and plans to happen and purposes to happen in your life, in the life of his beloved children, will ultimately turn for good and will turn out to be a blessing. So nothing that is happening today or tomorrow or this month or next year is going to not work out for your good. All of it will work together for good. If you have repented of your sins, if you have placed your faith in Christ, you are promised that no matter what happens, we'll work together for your ultimate good. So you can have hope in that promise keeper who is promising to work out everything for your good. How about promise number four? This one comes from Philippians 4.19. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches, in glory in Christ Jesus. That means God will meet all of your needs. Not one need of yours will go unmet. Think about that. Not one need of yours will go unmet. He is a generous God. He provides. And he provides according to his riches, not just out of his riches. So what needs are weighing on your heart here tonight? Where do you need God to intervene and really provide for you right now? What might be stressing you out or causing you to be worried or anxious? God promises to supply for your every need. And he will do this. He will give you what is needed when it is needed. So you can trust your God. You can trust the promise keeper to provide whatever it is that you need here today. And lastly, number five, John 10, 28. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Ladies, Jesus promises right here to hold on to you. No one can snatch you from his hand. Your security, it rests in Jesus. It does not rest in your own doing. Jesus has the power and nothing can take you from him. Nothing can get you out of his grip. This means that as you journey through this world, 
you can be confident, you can be filled with hope that your eternity is secure. Nothing can take you from his grip. Christ has a hold. Your ultimate problems have been dealt with if you have known Christ, if you have turned from your sins and trusted in him, you are being held on to. Your eternity is secure. And so as you go about this holiday season, I want us to let every single Christmas decoration that we see be a prompt and a reminder that God is a promise keeper, okay? As we see Christmas lights on houses, as we see the decorations in our own homes, as we see presents that we're buying. Let everything surrounding Christmas remind you that God is a promise keeper. If he kept all of the promises foretelling our Savior's birth and all that surrounds it, then he will keep the promises that he has made to you right now. And I want to encourage you to take those five cards and choose one to really hone in on for this next month and maybe even the next year. Of these five promises, which one does your mind need to fixate on? Which, which promise do you need to magnify in your mind? Which promise do you need to trust the promise keeper to fulfill every single day for you? Which promise will become your go-to anchor for hope as you move forward in this wearying world? God's promises, they are meant to be deep and lasting they are meant to give a deep and lasting thrill of hope to you as you journey forward in this life. He promises to never leave you or forsake you. He promises to supply you grace that is enough for everything you must face. He promises that nothing will be wasted and all things will work together for your good. He promises to supply every need of yours. And he promises that eternity is secure, that nothing can separate you from his grip. And so our mighty God, he is a promise keeper. And that is what we want to move forward remembering and be encouraged by. And how we want to worship our promise keeper for keeping past promises, fulfilling them, and for keeping the promises right here, right now that he has promised to us and will continue to fulfill until he calls us home. Let's pray. God, we do just come before you, and we praise you, and we want to worship you here tonight, God, that you are the promise keeper. God, you have made promises to your people. You have fulfilled past promises, and you are right now fulfilling promises, and will continue to, God. And I just pray that our hearts would be lifted to you, that our eyes would really be set on you, that we would be encouraged in you, that we would trust you, that we would find hope in you. God, that we would have no reason to worry and be fearful or distrust you. God, would you help us to cling on to hope? Would you help us to keep our hope in that right place and to really believe and trust what you have promised to us? God, we thank you that you are faithful, that you have kept your promises, and that you promise to continue. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen.